remember polar coordinates it's a circular way of locating a point whereas rectangular coordinates it's like an etch-a-sketch kind of a way you know you can only go left and right up and down so let's take a look at this point right here so to get to this point you're going right X up Y so that's how you locate the point with polar you're going out to a circle of radius R and then you're rotating an angle theta to get to that same point but what we want to do is we want to convert from uh, rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates but let's take a look at this triangle here and this will tell us how to convert so we've got x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared right because of Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared and then if you take the square root of both sides you can see that the radius is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared okay now with this angle here if you take the tangent of theta that's equal to opposite over adjacent that's y over x but if you take the tangent inverse of both sides, you can see that theta is equal to the tangent inverse of y over x. So these are the two formulas that we're going to be working with in this lesson. Let's look at example number one to give us the point negative 3, 4. That's x, y, rectangular coordinates. We want to get to r theta. So I always like to draw a sketch. I just kind of like to see what's going on here. So left 3, up 4, that's the point. That's the radius we're looking for. That's the angle we're looking for. Okay, so you're with me so far? So what we're going to do is we're going to use this first formula over here. We've got the radius is equal to the square root of x squared, so negative 3 squared, plus y squared. That's 4 squared. So this comes out to 9 plus 16. Square root of 25 is equal to 5. So we know our radius is 5. Okay, now we want to find the angle. So we're going to be using this formula over here theta is equal to the tangent inverse of y over x. Okay, in this case, y is 4 and x is negative 3, so we're doing the tangent inverse of 4 over negative 3. Now let me go to the calculator on this one, see what that comes out to. We've got tangent inverse of 4 divided by negative 3, and that's coming out to a negative 53.1. But you're probably saying, wait a second, Mario, that's actually not a negative 53.1. This is a negative 53.1 here. So what you do in that case is, because we're over here in the second quadrant, you have to add 180 degrees. Tangent's restricted from negative 90 to positive 90. That's why it's giving me this answer. So if we add 180, we're getting about, I'm going to round to about 127 degrees. Okay, so that's our angle. Theta equals 127 degrees. If we put it together, the radius and the angle, 5 comma 127 degrees. That's our theta, and that's our point in polar coordinates. Okay, so now for example number 2, they're giving us x and y, right? So 2 and 2 root 3, and we want to go to polar, r and theta. So let's use this formula. r is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. Take the square root. So that comes out to 4 plus, let's see, 2 squared is 4. Square root of 3 squared, that's just going to give you 3 times 4. That's 12. Square root of 16 is equal to 4. So that's our radius. And if we want to do our angle now we're going to do the tangent inverse of y divided by x so that's 2 root 3 over 2 you can see the 2's cancel where does tangent equal square root of 3 well you know from your unit circle the tangent's going to equal square root of 3 uh, let's see that's y over x so that's going to be right over here at a 60 degree angle or a 60 degree angle here in the third quadrant that's why I like to graph the points so I can kind of see where, I, where I'm at here. I'm right 2 and up 2 root 3. I'm in the first quadrant. Okay, so that means that this is a 60 degree angle or we could say pi over 3 if we want to write it in radians. So if we write our final answer, r comma theta, 4 comma pi over 3. Sometimes students ask me, you know, well, do I put it in radians or degrees? Again, that's going to be up to your teacher. They'll let you know what uh, form that they'd rather have it in, radians or degrees. But the key is the radius and the angle. Make sure you graph it to make sure you're in the correct quadrant. I hope this helped you to understand how to work with polar coordinates better. Subscribe to the channel. Check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring. And I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.